Hi, good evening, everyone. I just quick check, can you hear me? Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I am Dr. Deshmukh. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Dr. Deshmukh. Thank you. Yeah. How are you? Very good. Very good. Great. And how is KPMG doing? Yes. Uh, good. Good times for everybody, I guess. So yes, no complaints. All. All very nice. Very true. Very true. I and hope everything really, is okay at your end. Really exciting times. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, they are. Because we are entering into a very, very challenging and a period which is full of lots of opportunities. Yes, it is. <laughs> there is abundance of everything. Abundance of everything, yes. Opportunities and challenges. Yes, that is true. And thanks to our digital infrastructure, I think there are many things which are possible now. That's right. I think it's uh, it's helping everyone. It's helping everyone. No scar, sir. Pram. No scar. No scar. sir. Jain sir. No scar. Good evening, Jain sir. <laughs> Akleshi, uh, you are audible? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Good evening, yeah. Professor Jain. Uh, good morning. Good, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Akleshi. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, from IIT BHU. Though we are meeting for the first time, but good evening. Yes, yes, we are meeting for the first time, but uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, it's not going to be the last time. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> So, Akhilesh how your cyber security projects are going on because you, you, you are in many times uh, giving very good blocks and messages on cyber security. So, we feel very encouraged to read your messages actually because that are uh, blocks, the, those looks very in, interesting actually, particularly when there is a massive digitization going on in that respect. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's going well. Uh, so, I do cyber security for the global uh, business, but for India, I do all the digital transformation stories. So uh, my my portfolio in India is uh, everything to do with uh, digital transformation consulting and others. So uh, yeah, I, I talk more about cyber because that's what my global marketing team wants me to do. But reality is that there is more digital than uh, risks. So yeah, it's all very good. Uh, yeah, very good, sir. So, Professor Deshmukh, actually, you can see that uh, how closely uh, we have robed Akhilesh because he's our very prominent alum of the NITI, actually, and uh, have a lot of uh, linkage with us. And hey, very nice. Yeah. And that's what I was discussing with him. Mm -hmm. These are really times full of opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Very good evening, Professor David. Hello. Good evening. Good morning, everybody. Also, David, happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. This is a very yeah. interesting coincidence, right? <laughs> Good morning, David. Nice. Happy birthday, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, is, is it your uh, special day today? It is today. It is exactly oh. today. Wonderful, wonderful. So I I'm starting the day with all of you. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's it's uh, but I, I'm, I'm happy that you're able to take time out despite this being uh, a Sunday morning for you. Thank you. Actually, I, I must say uh, this has been a year and a half collaboration now with NITI and it has been really amazing experience, amazing collaboration. A lot That's thanks so to the team and Professor Manoj who led the the collaboration. I I can relate to that. Yes, I have had the opportunity to see him in action. So yes, he he brings the best out of everyone. 
Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Achha ji, actually, ne, we, we know Professor Jain since last 20 years, and Professor Deshmukh also, he liked my guru. And uh, both of years, so Jain sahab actually is very instrumental in uh, linking ITBHU with the NITI. So we thought that, okay, let's have a joint course with them and uh, take the advantage of uh, both the positions because we, we get very good students from ITBHU actually in NITI. Yeah? So, yes. Very nice. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. And <clears throat> Akhilesh ji, Professor Manoj literally works 24 by 7 basis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, that I is very really wonderful. I've seen some of it. Yes. So yes, absolutely. So, oh, um, wh where is everybody located? Wh which city within uh, India? I know, of course, where Professor Manush is, but where is everybody? I'm from Varanasi. Uh, I am from Delhi. <laughs> I live close to Delhi. I live in uh, a satellite town called Gurgaon, which is like you know, very close to Delhi. It's, it's it's really a global collaboration, unbelievable. Yeah. And when and when you see where some of the students come from, it's even more impressive. Yeah, very true. Where, where do you live, Professor David? Do you live in uh, Cambridge? So I live in Boston, but now I uh, summer, so I'm in um, Newport, which is maybe an hour and a half, two hours drive, just outside um, of Boston. That's where I'm running, I'm calling uh, this morning. Uh, oh, sorry, David, uh, uh, you know, all this uh, palette which is with you, uh, we are in the different places, but uh, there are many things in common. Like, say, like, like say, uh, my association with Professor Deshmukh is as old as 99, means more than 23 years. With Professor Jain, more than 30 years. Wow. And with you, with you also, I think uh, I, I know you since last around 25 years when you were in Colombia that time. Huh? Yep, yep. So, Very interesting. Uh, uh, at least I come to know only when I joined NITI because earlier there was no much uh, uh, things. But after coming here, I know among few prominent alums of the NITI, then uh, we notice his uh, activities and his, his stature and profile. And that was really very inspiring to all my three students. So, and also our chief guest Rakesh is also blessed with a lot of credentials on his head. And at present, actually, he is on the way from uh, Agra to Delhi somewhere. So he told mm -hmm. that he will join late. I said, no problem. But only time, please make it at the end so that uh, it, it will go in that way. So this is the way that how we are moving ahead today. And uh, all together with ITBHU and ET, this is somewhere around uh, uh, more than 1,500 participants. Uh, so, and a lot of uh, other things are there. So, I think uh, once, we, once we start, let me check it from outside, then we can start. Sir. Sure. Uh, sir, we are going to start the closing ceremony. So I think I see. Please take up the thing. Yes. Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the closing ceremony of the Global Online Certification Course on Data-Driven Supply Chain Transformation 2020. 
on behalf of Niti Mumbai and IIT BHU. Uh, we are not able to hear properly. Are you able to hear well? Uh, Ayushi, I think you are uh, we are not able to hear you. Ayushi, can you make it louder? Yes, sir. Hello, 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 is it, is it, is it? Yes, sir. Now is it fine? Yeah. Okay. Sir. Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the closing ceremony of the Global Online Certification Course on Data Driven Supply Chain Transformation 2022. On behalf of NITI Mumbai and IIT PHU RNC, I would like to thank all the dignitaries, faculties, and course participants for gracing us with their presence on this occasion. Today, we have with us Honorable Chief Guest Sri Rajesh Agrawalji, Secretary Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, <laughs> Professor S.G. Deshmukh, Professor of, of Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Delhi, and Mr. Akhilesh Tudeja. Global Head Cybersecurity at KPMG as our keynote speakers. We also have with us our reputed world renowned course instructor, Professor David Simchi Levy from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, USA, Professor Manoj K. Tiwari, Director NITI, and Professor Pramod Kumar Jain, Director of IIT BHU. NITI was established in 1963 by the Government of India with the purpose to advance transformative education and industry-inspired research, thus helping Indian businesses to make their presence felt globally. It has proven its excellence by continuously being featured amongst India's best B schools and was ranked ninth amongst the management schools in India by NIRF 2022 ranking framework. It is the leading institute of operations and supply chain management, and this is evident from the placement statistics of the batch. NITI attracted 100 plus recruiters for its final placement, with the average salary of the batch being 25.44 lakhs per annum. This NITI has aligned its vision and activities in line with the current and future needs of the Indian industries, making them influential globally. IIT BHU is a public technical university located in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh, India. Founded in 1919 as the Banaras Engineering College, it was designated as Indian Institute of Technology in 2012. The institute celebrated its centenary year in 2019-20. It has proven its excellence by continuously being featured in India's best engineering college list and was ranked 13 amongst the engineering colleges in India by NIRF in 2022. NITI has successfully completed five versions of the Global Online Certification course with Professor David Simchi Revi. The courses have received an overwhelming response with close to 6,000 participants from eminent organizations like CIPLA, Micron, Tata Steel, l &T, Schneider Electric, IBM, and many more. Across the five courses, we have trained more than 700 students and faculty from prominent IIMs and IITs. I would like to highlight the success of our previous courses, where we received an average rating of 4.6 out of 5 for teaching style, course execution, and overall lecture experience. After the success of the previous courses, NITI has launched this need of the R course in collaboration with Professor David Simchi Levy considering the emergence of digitization of supply chain in today's technology-driven world. This was a 30-hour weekend-only course with prime focus on topics such as digitization, analytics, production optimization, and integration of techniques. Our course instructor, Professor David Simchi Levy, is the most renowned professor and thought leader in the field of analytics, operations, and supply chain management. He also serves as the editor-in-chief of Management Science, 
He is the recipient of the prestigious Informs Impact Prize 2020 and for his work in supply chain resilience. Professor Manoj Tiwari is himself a stalwart in operations in a CM domain with over 341 publications in international journals. He is also the recipient of the most influential researcher award in this domain. Professor Pramod Kumar Chen has a broad background in manufacturing systems and engineering, engineering including product design development. The course gained huge popularity among major business houses and supply chain leaders across the globe and great recognition from various media houses such as the Economic Times. A student ambassador program was launched on D2C platform where we had more than 250 applications. We selected a team of 16 student ambassadors from various eminent institutes like IITs, IIMs, NITs, who gave their best in reaching out to students, faculty, and alumni, and making them aware of this initiative by NITI and IIT BHU. More than 1,600 participants from all over the globe took part in this course. We have participants from more than six countries and 84 esteemed organizations, some of which are Micron, Cipla, LNT, Tata Steel, Flipkart, and many more. The, the uniqueness of this course stems from the features it has offered, such as experience sharing session conducted by industry stalwarts from reputed organizations. We thank all of you for the insightful interactions with the participants and the panelists, and we are sure that your pres presentations captured our audience well and added value to them. We truly believe that all genuine learning comes from experience, and we certainly hope that we did justice to our participants through this initiative. Thank you once again for your active participation in these sessions. The course has received compelling feedback from participants. As evident from this slide, 98.3% of the course participants are willing to attend future courses by NITI. Thanks to the esteemed faculty and relentless effort from the student coordinators. The course garnered a rating of more than 4.5 out of 5 across all parameters. Feedback we believe is one of the most valuable sources of learning there is. As you can see in the slide, we have received great feedback which spoke of instructors' articulation and moderation, the prompt query resolution, and the platform provided by NITI to interact with the professor. Now I would like to call upon Professor Manoj Kumar Tiwari, Director Niti for the welcome address. Sir, I kindly request you to share a few words. Yeah. Thank you, Arashi, uh, for uh, uh, giving broad introduction of the course. And at the outset, uh, I express my uh, deep regards to Professor David for accepting uh, uh, our collaborative relationship to can conduct so many courses with the NITI. And uh, because of him, we have been very much successful in uh, connecting with many of the industries and other institutions. And we have seen a transformative, uh, you can say, changes in the many domains of our uh, academic as well as research connect with the industry. And uh, among us today, our uh, chief guest, Mr. Ajay Sagarwal, who may join later on, because presently he's on the way. He is also an IS officer of high repute and held many of the positions in the government of India. And presently, he is the Ministry of Skill and Development and Entrepreneurship as Secretary. And among us today, one of our beloved uh, alumni and well-known, uh, you can say, expert of the cyber security of uh, the prominent forms of KPMG, uh, Mr. Akhilesh Tuteja, he is our distinguished alumni. He is also here today to grace the occasion and also uh, act as a keynote speaker for today's uh, uh, closing ceremony. And our beloved uh, so Desmukhji, who is our board member also, and also my guru, and who is responsible for bringing a lot of uh, uh, newer knowledge to my notice, as well as also that we translate to the and provide to the student. And my friend and you can say very uh, family-like uh, relationship with Professor P.K. Janji, he is so kind enough that uh, uh, whenever we need any kind of collaborative efforts, he's always ready to provide all such things. And in this course, the participation of 600 students from 
uh, IIT BHU is one of the testimony of that kind of licensing. So coming to the course, actually, uh, I thank all the participants and resource persons actually who joined this course and the kind of coverage till now it has achieved is uh, started with the basics of the logistics supply chain management and then uh, different strategies of the post pool bull heap and all other things that he that Professor David explained and also given a very good impression about the uh, supply chain integration segmentation and how the big data and operations uh, improvements are possible through the demand uh, uh, analytics kind of approach and uh, Professor David also dwelled a lot on the supply chain flexibility resiliency and given a lot of uh, given very good uh, uh, overview and insight about the risk pooling and other kind of inventory management strategies. And uh, now uh, he was covering sustainability aspects and also that how the uh, carbon footprint, et cetera, is affecting the different aspects of supply chain. So I would like to share to the, my panelists here that uh, uh, such kind of course uh, is part of actually one of the very ambitious program of the government of India called PM Gati Sakti. Under PM Gati Sakti, Ministry of uh, Education, they have provided us the some sort of uh, recognition to act as a nodal agency among the different institutions of prominence in India. And we are coordinating the course and designing the course and also uh, trying to provide the different expertise to others so that they can uh, offer more courses to have the capacity building in support of the PM Gati Shakti mission. So it is one of the course in that line that is, uh, and because of that, uh, our institution unity as along with the IIT BHU. So we have uh, totally shared uh, this mission and uh, it is one of the, you can say, course that we are trying to promote uh, to many other institutions also. And that way we are helping the government of India to build a very good capacity of the professionals and knowledgeable people who can support the logistic uh, cost reduction mission of the government of India. So with this note, I am once again thankful to all of you for joining our platform. And uh, now I, over to Arashi now, please. Arashi, please. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call upon Professor Pramod Kumar Jain, Director, IIT BHU Varanasi. Professor Pramod Kumar Jain is the Director of IIT BHU Varanasi. For his outstanding contributions to teaching and research, he has won several allocates from several quarters, such as University Prize, University Medal from IIT Roorkee, Career Award for Young Teachers by AICT. Sir, I kindly request you to share a few words with the participants. Thank you, Ayushi. First of all, very good evening to all of the dignitaries who are joining us today. Shri Rajesh Agrawalji, who is looking after the Ministry of Skill Development and, and Entrepreneurship. Shri Akhilesh Ji from KPMG. And my friends, Professor Deshmukh and Professor Tiwari. Professor David, who is always, you know, available to us to conduct such type of specialist programs for the students and of course for the people from industry and academia and dear participants. As we know that, uh, as told by Professor Tiwari, actually we are also trying to support the uh, ambitious project of Government of India that is PM Gati Shakti and it is coordinating that program we are partner in that program and our objective is to basically make sure that the supply chain community in india come together somehow through this program and through these programs and then part on some of the knowledge to our next generation that is our students or the faculty members in different institutions and other places and uh, as said by Professor Tiwari and Ayushi that I am happy that there are more than 1600 students who are participating in this program. And this program actually is organized jointly by NITI, IIT BHU and IADAPT hub of IIT BHU. Actually IADAPT hub is a kind of uh, uh, DST program under the cyber physical systems and our mandate is to 
work in the area of data analytics and predictive technologies. And supply chain management is one of the verticals of that. So we thought of joining this program since beginning and I'm happy that this time we could join together and we are in the process of, I think, uh, organizing few more such programs. Actually, if it is data driven supply chain transformation, then there may be another program focusing on cyber security related issues in supply chain management. Akhilesh ji may highlight more, you know, insight on that uh, topic. So with this, I would say that this is a good beginning, not the uh, valedictory, I would say, not the closing ceremony, but this will open many more such opportunities for us to come together as a supply chain community and to prepare the next generation to take up this challenge. In fact, when country is growing fast, when country is expanding in manufacturing and all kind of such type of activities. Thank you, Tiwari ji, for taking us on board, and we will be happy to be part of Gati Shakti program. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Ayushi. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Professor David Simchi Levy, our lead instructor of the course, for the keynote session. He is a professor for business and supply chain analytics and director of data science lab at MIT USA. Professor Simchi Levy founded Logic Tools, now a subsidiary of IBM, which provided software solutions and decision support systems to clients such as Caterpillar, ConAgra, Kraft Food, among others. He later co-founded OPS Rules in Opaltex, which are now a part of Accenture. Professor David has previously associated with NITI for five global online certification courses on the domains of supply chain management and data analytics. The courses were highly successful with over 6,000 participants from 13 plus countries. We thank Professor David and we are honored to have this continued association with you, sir. Professor David, now the stage is yours for the keynote speech. Thank you, Aushi. Uh, thank you, uh, my partners, Professor uh, Manush Tayuri and Professor Pamon Kumar for uh, starting, for initiating, for collaborating uh, with me on this class. Uh, welcome to the dignitaries, the faculty, the student ambassador, the participants from industry and academia. This has been, at least for me, a very exciting experience. A class focusing on global supply chain that bring together people, as you saw earlier, from different countries, different industries, to talk about supply chain analytics, resiliency, supply chain digitization, flexibility, sustainability, but cutting across all of them is business and supply chain collaboration, like the collaborations that we have here between NITI, IIT, and myself from the MIT Data Science Lab. This is an opportunity for just a few minutes to highlight the important transformation that supply chain has been going through over the last three or four years. I truly believe that with the avalanche of supply chain disruptions that we see <clears throat> now and that we have seen over the last few years, companies are rethinking supply chain strategies. Companies are transforming their businesses and starting to focus their investment on supply chain manufacturing operation outside of countries like China, into countries like Vietnam, into countries like India. This is an important opportunity where supply chain and businesses not compete on low cost, but rather on technical ability. It's this combination of digitization, 
analytics and automation together with good deep understanding of supply chain that allow companies to compete in the market what i am hoping we are in a small way helping indian uh, business professional supply chain professional future leaders to understand and to transform some of the most exciting opportunities that are coming in your region of the world i'm really excited to be a partner here and i hope we will have uh, future opportunities to make further impact thank you uh, everybody uh, thank you professor david and uh, to all my viewers as well as panelists uh, i just want to welcome my thank you professor david for an insightful words it is Chief always Chief. an honor and an enriching experience to hear from you just now i would like to call upon mr akhilesh tudeja global head cyber security at kpmg for the keynote address akhilesh sir is passionate about developments in the area of information technology and how these can help businesses drive smart processes and effective outcomes he has advised over 200 clients on matters relating to cyber security it strategy selection of technologies and help them realize the business benefits of technology he possesses good knowledge of behavior psychology and is enthusiastic about addressing the issues of it risks in a holistic manner especially through the application of user behavior analytics due to his positioning as an independent expert he has been a member of a jury for a number of and won a number of awards over the last few years mr akhilesh is a notable speaker on cyber security and its implication on enterprise businesses and also played an active part in developing security and privacy mat privacy frameworks for the banking industry in india sir the stage is now yours for the speech at least is just one minute before uh, you start actually we have here our chief guest sri rajesh agarwal ji honorable secretary ministry of skill development and entrepreneur enterprises so sir we welcome you sir in our program and thank you very much for sparing your time and just now professor david has given his inaugural talk sir now our uh, alumni and noted expert of cyber security akhilesh tudeja ji from kpmg is going to discuss some of his points and uh, after that sir we come and request you and brief you about the course and other things thank you sir for joining the program sir. thank you sir akhilesh ji please over to you sir uh, thank you professor tiwari um, i'm conscious of the time uh, mr agarwal has taken so if he wants to go first i'm perfectly okay uh, sir you go <laughs> you go ahead okay. sir Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, so thank you, Professor Tiwari, in particular, and thank you, uh, Niti. Thank you, IIT BHU, for uh, first organizing a course like this. It is uh, absolutely the need of the hour. But more importantly, a big thank you for inviting me. As uh, Professor mentioned, uh, I'm I'm very proud of uh, being the alumnus of Niti. I still believe that the best thing which happened to me was to have uh, spent nearly two years in the institute, and that has completely changed my uh, perspective and outlook to life. And I can't be more thankful to each and every person in the faculty and the uh, team which runs NITI to do what they do to make a magical difference to every student which comes through. So I'm, I'm deeply, deeply proud and uh, more than that indebted to what the Institute does to the students. Uh, today, I'm actually not going to talk anything about uh, cybersecurity, although that was spoken about my introduction, because I do think that uh, Niti did talk, uh, taught me a little bit about supply chain, and I've carried that on a little bit. So I'll try and uh, appear to be smarter than I'm actually today, uh, because I have the license to talk about uh, supply chain, having just graduated out of Niti. So that's something I think every Niti graduate can bluff at least the chapter one of the supply chain books. I'm going to try my luck today. Before I tell you anything about uh, the course, which I'm sure all of you have enjoyed going through it and today being the last session, uh, let me tell you a story about a, a rock band. And some of you might not have been born at that time or some of you might not have heard. I'm talking about a rock band which existed somewhere on the west coast of the US in Pasadena, a rock band called Van Halen. Some of you must have followed it. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, Alex Van Halen, two, two, two uh, brothers and two other people come together and make a rock band. And that band actually created history. They were one of the best of their time. 
and they created a lot of new standards which the industry today follows. But I'm, to talk, I'm going to talk to you today about a very interesting thing which they did. What they did is that they brought a significant amount of lighting to the stage. Now you must be wondering, saying, why am I talking about a rock band and a lighting in a course which Niti is running about supply chain? But I'll tell you, those guys were so famous that they could demand sun and moon to the, all the organizers. Of course, they were very, very expensive, as I think Professor uh, David uh, and she is. And uh, they wanted to make sure that when they go and perform, the stage is set exactly the way we, they want it. And to make sure it happened, they used to sign a contract with the organizers. And this contract used to be pretty large, 50, 60 pages and a lot of fine print. And in that contract, there used to be a large annexure which used to specify saying what conditions the organizers must follow. And the conditions used to be saying what is the kind of lighting lumens you can have because that was one of their USPs. It also specified the height of the stage because they wanted to be visible from the last row. It also specified the distance between the first row and the stage. And it also uh, specified the tonnage or the weight the stage could take. So there are like lots and lots of criteria. But somewhere deep down, there was another criteria which basically said that the organizers will have to provide a bowl full of M&Ms in the green room. Now, all these celebrities are used to having such funny demands and organizers are fine, that's yet another demand. But the demand was even more stricter. What they said that the bowl must contain no brown M&Ms. So what it basically meant that I'm sure all of you have seen those M&Ms, they come in multiple colors. In fact, the guys who, who, who do the supply chain for the M&Ms would not know how many brown M&Ms go in a pack. But their condition was that in the green room, the bowl will have M&Ms, but there'll be no brown M&Ms. And of course, uh, people used to provide sometimes and sometimes don't. Now, everybody thought that was a funny thing, but the thing was pretty easy and simple. What these guys, the Van Halen guys, had they had discovered a way to apply data analytics to their problem. And they felt that it was impossible for them to come and check whether the stage was set as they wanted it. But what they went is that they went into the green room and if they found a bowl full of M&Ms and no brown M&Ms, they were quite sure that all the other conditions, which are much bigger, have been taken care of. And if they found no bowl of M&Ms or they found a bowl of M&M, but with lots of brown M&Ms in this, they realized that the organizers have not been very particular and the stage is not set the way they wanted. Now, why am I telling you this story? The reason I'm telling you this story is that every significant player in the supply chain or otherwise needs to find a way to use data and insights and leading indicators to predict what to expect. And this was Van Halen's way to demystify a lot of information. So rather than coming three hours before to the show and checking every single thing, they created their own lead indicator to say that if the organization took care of the brown M&Ms, that means that they have complied with all of these requirements. And that is what I think all of us are learning in today's world is that can we use the power of data and power of small data to actually predict big outcomes? And I've seen the course outline. I can tell you that the course is really focused on creating possibilities of what you can do by using the data and insights and building large scale supply chains. Now, why we are talking about supply chain, I can tell you if there's one thing which is today breaking the user experience, it is the supply chain. We are all talking about the supply chain delays, the container predictability of the global trade. And I'm sure those of you who are who are dealing with the industry which, which uses microprocessor or chips, be it computing industry or be the automobile industry, are seeing the impact of one tiny bit is creating a big issue in the supply chain. So in my view, picking up supply chain and using the data analytics, there couldn't have been a better combination for the organizers to pick. I would like to talk about three very simple takeaways. So having looked at what the course outline is, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot more than what I'm going to tell you today. But if I were to tell you, I will say three simple things that would be my takeaway for today's session. So the first one is that in the world of data analytics, there are lots of possibilities. In fact, if you really want to find out, data analytics can do nearly magical outcomes. But the real challenge is not to find the solution, but the real challenge is to frame the question. I have seen most of the time the data analytics programs actually don't deliver the results because most of the times we don't know what we are seeking. 
So it is important to know all our algorithms. It's important to know all the kind of ways to manipulate data. But most important of all is that do we really have a hypothesis? Do we really know how to frame the question? So one of my biggest takeaway on data analytics has been it's not how important the answer is, but it's how important the question is. So my first takeaway is that make sure that you get your problem right before you try to seek the solution. The second thing which I want to share with you has been my big learning in this space is a lot of time we are we are hearing data is the new oil, data is the new water, data is the new oxygen and all of that which are hearing. But I can tell you the kind of data which exists today in our enterprises, it is anything but reliable because there is so much of noise in the data, there is so much of dirtiness in the data. In fact, I've seen that a lot of people chase lots and lots of data and when you chase lots and lots of data you're likely to find more dirty data than good data so my second big learning has been that data is your enemy before it becomes your friend and i repeat it here data is your enemy before it becomes your friend so don't take any data and just apply it to an algorithm and get the answer you also have to spend time on getting the data quality right so one of the big thing i would say is that yes data is the new oil but it is as good a crude oil as we dig it from the underground. So we need to also refine the oil and therefore we also need to refine the data before you can actually use it. Let's no longer chase the, the large volume of data, but let's chase the, the good quality of data. And my third one, which I will say again, going back to my Van Halen story, that if you want to make healthier decisions, if you want to make healthier decision, follow low information diet. You don't need lots and lots of data. You need fewer but high quality insights. And therefore, for all of you who are going to take away all the learnings, which Professor Tiwari, Professor Jain, and Professor David is going to talk to you about, you frame the problem right. You also make sure that you, you spend time on data, but don't try and achieve too many things because that's one of the biggest challenges I've seen is that the, the low information diet you follow, the healthier you are and the healthier decision you'll make. And before I kind of end, I do want to say that the Institute is doing a great, great job to the, in my view, to the universe, because subject like this cannot be learned in a self-study mode. And I've seen many things can be done in a self-study mode, but a subject like this is not, because it requires a lot of collaboration. It requires a lot of facilitated conversation. And I get reminded of a very interesting delicacy. Some of you might have heard. It's a, it's a very specialty fish called fugu fish. Fugu fish is served in Japan and it's considered to be the best delicacy one can have. But guess what? Fugu fish is also the most dangerous and poisonous fish. So you can't be a chef which will serve fugu fish to anybody. For anybody to become a fugu fish chef, you require a license from the Japanese government. And you need to be working for three years under a licensed chef to become a fugu fish chef. So I want to tell you saying that when you take on all of this knowledge, I think you have had the ability to cook your own fugu fish and make sure that you become the best chef and don't create poisonous outcome, but create the most delicious outcome. So those are the things which I wanted to share with you. I'm also very excited with the three big technologies which are coming into our world when it comes to supply chain, which is about IoT, blockchain, and edge computing. I would love to, to see how this course has addressed that because those are the three technologies which are making the world happen. But with that, I would like to conclude by thanking yet again, Professor David, Professor Manoj, and Professor Pramod Kumar Jain for the outstanding effort they have done to put together this course. And I once again thank all of you for inviting me here. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Akhilesh Ji, for such a very, uh, you can say, connecting different things with logistics supply chain and also your own experience of bringing the element of uh, data into the course and also given good advice that in days to come, we have to also consider the edge computing and uh, other data driven technologies along with the blockchain to strengthen the supply chain. We will do it, sir. No problem. And uh, Professor Desmukh, now I request you, sir, to have a few words for this occasion, sir. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tiwari, Sri Rajesh Ji, Akhilesh Ji, Professor Tiwari, Professor David, faculty and dear participants of this very, very exciting course, Data-Driven Supply Chain Transformation. And it has been a very, very exciting course for all of us. 
I have attended. I have enjoyed this course thoroughly. I must thank uh, Professor Tiwari and Professor P K Jain for hosting such a wonderful course. We had the benefit of huge experience, and most importantly, the teaching skills of Professor David and Professor Tiwari. The way they addressed the queries, the way they shared their insights, it was a big learning experience. For all of us, and Professor David, I really enjoyed the concept of stress test, the trade-off between efficiency and flexibility, the way resiliency comes into picture, and few quantifiable indicators by which we can define this, especially during the after the post-COVID period. I must thank Professor David. For really conducting the sessions in a very very engaging and wonderful manner, and especially important was the experience sharing at the end of each session. They were from industry, and that also told us the kind of transformations which are taking place throughout the country. I was just sharing with uh, Akhilesh ji. That these are really exciting times. These are exciting times, full of opportunities and full of challenges. Why these are exciting times? Because these are happening in an exciting country like India. India is now a very very aspirational society. We are targeting five trillion economy, and it is a huge huge. i would say ambitious target and we would also like to capture the major share of the global logistic market which in money terms happens to be about 7 trillion us dollars by year 2026 and the pm gati shakti program which professor tiwari and professor jain have mentioned the basic objective is to reduce the logistic cost from the current 14% of gdp to 9% of gdp and that again translates into something like rupees 4 lakh crores it is a huge resource for a country like india and as i said country is exciting because of the huge digital transformation which have taken place the digital inclusion the entire financial sector is now enjoying the fruits of digital economy there is a young market in india and at the same time india would also like to aspire as a global leader and india has also been recognized as it or its capital of the world and most importantly from supply chain point of view we must appreciate the way we handle the supply chain of covid vaccine not only we delivered not only we developed but we also delivered the vaccine to about 200 crore doses throughout the country and this is a big challenge considering our diversity and our economy and another interesting thing which has happened that the supply chain has got strategic attention right from the top our prime minister has addressed in his independence address of 15th august 2020 he made a substantial reference to supply chain he also addressed global summit on supply chain resilience and professor david you have taught us how to take care of the resilience the indicators related to resilience and our prime minister has also given us a prescription he calls it as three pillars of resilient supply chain trust transparency and time responsiveness and i think your course is basically a big big capacity building exercise in sensitizing all of us in meeting this three pillars of resilient supply chain and as i said this pm gati shakti is a very very ambitious program there are seven engines which are driving this 
this includes railways waterways roads ports airports the mass transport systems and logistics infrastructure and for a country like india basically supply chain is what supply chain is nothing but about integration and collaboration so this ambitious program is trying to integrate 16 ministries of government of india four departments of government in, of india and most importantly the planning and thinking tank of government of india called as niti io and the basic thrust is on integrated planning for multimodal connectivity and coordinated implementation of variety of schemes which will try to boost our infrastructure and in this endeavor niti is recognized as a capacity building nodal agency and the purpose is to train about 75000 professionals in this particular area and this course i visualize as one of the right steps in developing those kinds of skills we would also like to develop pedagogy we'll also try to talk about the emerging technologies in this particular area and all this will result in the reduced logistic cost coming down to 9% of gdp and this is basically a very very exciting opportunity for integration of geoinformatics and geospatial technology on logistics and supply chain so there is an institute in ahmedabad who is extending this support that is called as bhaskaracharya national institute for space application and geoinformatics and i am sure with such kind of inputs our capacity to enhance the logistical infrastructure is going to improve a lot and i must thank akhilesh ji you have given three takeaways that is one was very interesting that you must frame the right question and make data as enemy before it becomes friend if we do not pose right question data is taken as a friend and later on we realize that data becomes enemy so it is very very important that we address these issues on the big canvas of pm gati shakti and try to pose right question and try to understand the importance of data thank you very much professor manoj tiwari for giving this opportunity and once again thanks to professor david and the entire team at niti who had made this experience very very enjoyable and engaging thank you very much thank you sir for uh, your remark about the course as well as about the subjects now i have time to introduce my chief guest uh, of the today's function uh, sri rajesh agrawal ji he belongs to indian administrative services and very senior is officer looking after the affairs of at present ministry of skill development and Inter entrepreneurship rajesh ji is a background from his computer science btech from iit delhi and basically he is from maharashtra cadre officer and held many important positions and demonstrated his computer science skill in many of the ways particularly when he handled the challenges that were there from delivery of the services improving better transparency through the it applications and particularly sir during your uh, instinct as election commission office where you developed a lot of fuzzy matching techniques to dedupe the voters list and then work with large scale databases of 700 million voters and 500 million photographs in more than dozen indian languages and that you executed and that was one of the phenomenal contributions and also the gis applications that you have did from census of india and also to make the delimitations of the assembly it was very mammoth task and it goes to your credit for that you really you deserve the praise and appreciation from one and all currently sir on your head there is a lot of responsibility government of india has given to build the skill for among the youth and people and working professionals who can take up the job of country by what uh, you taking up the different sectors of the economy which can match the expectation from the business point of view and also from societal point of view that how the more job creation and other things becomes one of the feasibility so in this regard sir we are also practicing this pm gati shakti and helping the uh, ministry actually to build more capacity of the professionals 
and in that line sir we are uh, we are we are running a lot of courses with the uh, professors like david simchi devi who is world renowned professor and on his credit this stress test is there sir that was very predominantly used by the uh, literary, what do you call it, uh, uh, companies as well as the academicians across the world uh, for uh, solving the many of the disruptions and challenges of the supply chain so sir with uh, your introduction i can say the kind of initiative you are taking that will lead india to have a more informed and more knowledgeable manpower for taking up the job of the country so with this note sir now i request you to have your views on the uh, subject and we, we are really grateful to you for giving time despite your busy schedule and you are sitting in a car that i can understand that how uh, really it was so pressing moment for you thank you very much sir now please you can start with thank you first i must uh, thank professor tiwari for giving me this chance to listen to experts like professor jain and professor david and akhilesh ji so for last half an hour i have uh, got really educated on this sector and uh, presently i am traveling from uh, agra to delhi so i have stopped at a roadside dhaba to uh, join this conversation uh, in the job sector we have 37 sector skill councils and the global talk is on three factors three d's the demographics decarbonization and uh, digitization the demographically the advanced world is becoming more aged so a lot of healthcare issues and all and uh, while we are a young nation and next year our population will surpass china at 1.4 billion uh, people so china has already started shrinking the population and in 25 years we'll peak at 1.68 billion population while china will be 1.3 billion at that time so that indicates the demographics and the potential as well as the looming disaster if we don't do things as well decarbonization uh, in your sector we will see a lot of uh, you no know, focus on crude oil and pollution so less polluting like cng and lpg vehicles coming in autonomous our country more focus on waterways in some sense uh, 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 privatization of railways freight already some thing has been done so we'll see and uh, obviously focus on roads so a uh, lot of things are happening on that count and then digitalization also your sector is seeing a lot of usage covid uh, first wave basically the covid lockdowns across the world they brought very sharp focus on the fragility of supply chains so the global supply chains even for smallest of items and uh, at thin inventories just in time inventories people realized that in a black swan event uh, Uh, kept in those uh, i was in petroleum sector at that time uh, two years ago and uh, and you can't turn off the tap on the oil wells so fast so we had ships across the globe full of crude oil and floating around and no one to take them and we had a funny situation of a negative crude rate also in uh, in april 2020 and uh, we as a country took chance to fill our underground caves in mangalore and vizag uh at very low rates so our average cost was uh, 19 dollars uh for crude at that point in time so the whole world went topsy turvy and uh, many established tourists in the logistics and inventories they went for it all and every country has started to try to become atam nirbhar in many things not only in india but even us and all other nations are trying to become atam nirbhar or self reliant in as many fields as possible and your sector is also very important because um, it's like cross cutting across all other sectors so whether it's healthcare or textiles or anything the supply chains are extremely important and uh, so these job roles are becoming very very important so even in normal times not only covid times unfortunately our country has not done too well on the logistic sides and you guys do talk of uh, gdp percentage and try to reduce that 
because ultimately it's a cost in the whole system. So we have inefficient uh, logistic chains, our port loading, unloading times, uh, still a lot of things to be done. The GST and fast tag have reduced travel times for long overhaul, but uh, not brought the stoppages to zero. So roads and toll delays, uh, warehousing issues. So a lot of issues are there. So Gati Shakti program luckily brings a focus and a debate on these issues that uh, the logistics have to be improved and uh, does try to sort of nudge on digitalization and analytics, etc. Uh, two years ago, I was handling fertilizers also as a finance advisor and uh, we were saying that if we just make the movement of the fertilizer across the country more scientifically analytic and uh, data driven, the country could save minimum 1000 crores per annum on the movement of fertilizers by utilizing the most efficient modes of road, railway, waterways, etc. And uh, sort of doing big data analytics or uh, some, a bit of AI on those. On this sector, I am also having discussions on the Agnivir scheme and the retiring uh, uh, armed force personnel. So all the our armed forces also, there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes work, which is actually logistic driven. So the number of job roles in these three forces on logistics are phenomenally high. One does not otherwise realize. And uh, there also we are trying to talk to a lot of people to basically act as a bridge when these guys actually who have good knowledge of supply chains, but in the armed forces system. So the software is sometimes different. The methodologies are different. So running some bridge courses so that when they shift from those job roles to civilian roles, they can uh, have useful jobs outside the system in the logistics sector. And uh, I'm sure this online batch of 1600 students, are basically executives from the industry, they have found this course useful. At least my half an hour uh, listening to the experts, I found it very useful and I'm sure the whole course, uh, all the participants would have found useful. And COVID has actually taught us that online training is also feasible. And uh, uh, so it's the basically better part of COVID that it has taught, taught us those things. And uh, obviously this batch had the benefit of um, best experts in the field like Professor David and Professor Manoj Tiwari and Professor Pramod Jain and other experts. And um, though I guess it's a convocation uh, time, but like someone was saying that um, it should not stop at this and uh, these conversations and uh, should continue and all the alumni of this course, they will continue their participatory discussions and experience sharing even after the course finishes. And I'm sure uh, Neeti has some system of major courses. And um, from ministry side and logistics sector skill council side, We'd love to basically take these conversations forward, have uh, more and more MOUs or more courses along with organizations like DITI, which are a matter of pride for all of us in the country, and uh, universities like BHU, which have come forward. So a lot of skilled universities have come up, which are um, actually tying up with a lot of uh, sector skill councils and other industry for uh, industry relevant courses. And uh, luckily we have same minister, Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan for education and skills. And I participate in large number of discussions on how to make our education more industry friendly. Now that realization that uh, realization is coming across all the regulators that our education has become sort of too academic, too sort of um, slightly away from the industry and uh, Job, uh, industry demands and now the corrective steps people are trying to take even at high school levels and uh, college levels and university levels we have various apprentice schemes so that industry becomes a very active partner with the academia and the government uh, to make the youth employable it's very unfortunate if a ba pass or even a btech pass the industry says the guy is sort of unemployable and we have to train them like fresh fellows. So that's unfortunate for the country. And uh, 
so the conversation should not stop here and uh, these kind of industry basically really shaking hands with the academia and uh, regulators we love to take it see more and more of these so i will stop here and it has been good education for me for one hour and uh, my best wishes to all the participants of this course and i am sure they will become more productive and uh, uh, we will also like to talk to a few of them to shake hands with them to shake hands with those industries and uh, make a few tie ups with the schools and colleges and um, thank you and best wishes to everyone thank you so much uh, thank you sir ajay sagrawal ji and uh, you have given very good uh, insight about the things and i i wish to mention that sir uh, that we are also running uh, two batches of the uh, dgmr programs sir, which are for the retired military professionals and they are being trained and you will be very happy to know that uh, all of them have got placed and they have rated niti as one of the best institute for the armed forces uh, personnel who wanted to retire from the army or uh, any other forces and they want to join the corporate world and also sir the we are uh, here both uh, we have a student as well as the industry professionals uh, attending this course and that way it's more interacting and most of the questions are asked by the industry professionals and and the students are getting benefit out of that so that they can have a better idea about the industry connect and also the problem and professor david is directly reporting the problems of the industry which he has consulted on the different aspects of supply chain so this way sir i think this course is much more in same way as the your wishes are there like how we can be more close to the industry and directly uh, these people if they want they can take up the roles of uh, supply chain at different levels actually so with this note sir once again we express our sincere thanks to you for sparing time and coming to us as a uh you can say chief guest for our functions and we will be in touch with you in days to come sir okay sir so over to rc i see i would like to thank all our guests of honor for their thoughtful words and for their kind words of appreciation towards this initiative we at niti and iit bhu varanasi will continue to add more value to businesses and to help to help them make their presence felt globally now i invite our faculty coordinator professor lakshya for the vote of thanks thank you aishi as we reach at the end of the closing ceremony i dr lakshya assistant professor iit bhu takes this opportunity to express our heart heartfelt gratitude to everyone who has made this course a huge success with 1600 plus individual from 84 plus prestigious national and international organizations from six plus different countries firstly and foremost i would like to thank professor david sinchi levy for kindly accepting our invitation to lead this course after completing six global online certification courses with niti we are sure that our participants would have been enriched by your unique teaching style the detailed explanation of the concepts such as push pull strategies supply chain segmentations resiliency and the flexibility and that too with the back end by the relevant case studies thank you professor david it's our privilege to have this association with you and we are looking forward to your upcoming courses in collaboration with niti and iit bhu we are thankful to our chief guest sri rajesh agrawal ji secretary ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship for gracing with his presence and enlightening us with his words of wisdom we are truly honored to have you with us today sir we thank the keynote speakers mr akhilesh tuteja global head of cyber cyber security at kpmg and dr sg deshmukh professor iit delhi for taking the time to join this event and sharing some great insight with us we are obliged to all our course participants for showing an overwhelming overwhelming response to this course and believing in collaboration of niti and iit bhu institutes of national importance as always it's a matter of pride for us that this course has been launched marketed and has been successfully conducted completely in house by the teams of niti and iit bhu we are incredibly grateful to professor manoj kumar tiwari director niti and professor pk jain director iit bhu under whose visionary leadership and guidance the successful completion of this course is possible 
We sincerely thank the IDAPT hub of IIT BHU for funding and financial support. Our thanks also to Professor Vikas Dubey for his effort throughout this course. We thank all our deans, professor in charge, the various officers and staff across various domains of academics, industry connect, media relations, alumni relations and director office of both the institute for having mobilized all the resources needed for this program. I thank our task force that was led by faculty coordinators, Dr. Priyanka Verma, Dr. Rofin, Dr. Maheshwar, Dr. Megha from Niti, and Dr. Ajinkya, Dr. Saurabh, and Dr. Agnivesh from IIT BHU side. We especially thank our student team, Shibhi, Rutvik, Prashant, Nishant, Ayushi, Giriraj, Pooja from Niti, and Ishwar, Shubham, and Nikhil from IIT BHU side who have handled the end-to-end -end execution of the entire course and have bought in data-driven innovation, unparalleled creativity and professionalism in launch and successful execution of this course. We also thank the research scholar Rosaline and Roni who have contributed to this course. Lastly, we are grateful to entire NITI and IIT BHU community for their continuous in engagement and support. Thanks everyone. So I now hand it over to Ayushi. So thank you, Lakshan, and everybody that point. So here I would like to pay my gratitude to a classy and uh, sir, you came and you given your talk and we are very, really blessed by your very smart way of explaining the things. And Professor Desmukh, sir, really you are always our one of the mentor as well as uh, you can say, uh, giving we giving the way that how we should proceed further. And uh, Professor Jain, thank you very much, sir, for sparing your time and always being uh, as, as your wife friends. And I can say that, uh, that uh, Professor David, uh, you, are, uh, you are unparalleled and there is no, uh, you can say, word for saying anything else to you. Uh, Mr. Rajesh Agarwalji, despite his busy schedule also, he given a lot of time to explain what is the priority of government of India and how he can link with this. So I can say that, yeah, so I request all of you to have your camera on, have a photograph because students want to make it past social media, sir. So at least uh, we have on your camera so that we can have this one, sir. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So all of you. Thank you very much, Akhilesh and everybody. So now, Participants, after five minutes, we will again come back for the remaining classes and that will cover the entire sessions. So, thank you, Akhilesh Ji, and everybody. Sir. Thank you. Pranam, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting. Thank, thank you. Bye. All the best. Jain Sahab, Desmukh, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Dear participants, uh, we have a break of five minutes and after five minutes, we will start with lecture 12. Thank you. <laughs>